Now, ladies and gentlemen, just because the 426 announcement has come out doesn't actually mean that I won't be covering anything else at the moment. Something came out that has been a bit foreshadowed, which is the roadmap update. Jirio number 20 roadmap update. Let's have a look at it so you guys can get updated on what's happening, right? I told you, I always keep you updated on Star Atlas, don't I? Don't I? Uh, Atos Leia, Star Atlas roadmap scan number 20. The group is divided as they fight for their lives against monsters and terrors never before seen. Their powers, their prowess and mental fortitude are tested and a sudden encounter reveals more about the monster's past. Now, this is some more AI art. This um, actually... Uh, this in this uh, in this report, there is a bit more information that I wanted to share with you guys because I thought it was super interesting, right? Of course, these ones follow the adventures of Wen and other people, Yago as well. But I'm interested in Atof. I want to see who the monster is, and hopefully, this makes it into the game itself. So this is what looks like the monster's layer, Atof's layer. Uh, lesson number eighty-three: Whenever you explore the depths of an unknown world, make sure you bring proper hydration, food, jetpacks, accessories, and night vision all lanterns. Statistics show that 13% of the depths in medium risk zone come from being ill-prepared to deal with the common dangers of the depths. And if you find any monster, make sure you turn back and call the nearest Council of Peace office. Then try to engage with them as they will make the world fall over your head, literally. The Merc... <laughs> say this in the Borat voice. The Merc successful guide for common sense learnings for the benefit of space exploration. <laughs> I was like Russian. I, I can't do the... I can't do the accent. Now, so in this uh, small article, um, I wanted to show you uh, a few. Uh, we're going to read through Atof's past or where Atof came from and what he did to actually become this giant uh, planet encapsulating uh, um, organism of sentience, right? Let's have, a, let's have a read first. This is the mash mushrooms in the depths of Jirio. They probably put some text inside an AI generation image and just generated these. That's what I think is happening at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and read a few excerpts from this so you guys can get an idea of Atof, right? First, he was a small grayish worm. And this is uh, uh, Yago uh, uh, getting memories from the, uh, from the thing that's attacking him. First, he was a small grayish worm, the same one he saw in his dreams after his battle with Atof. Even in his limited worm cognition, he could feel that the stone he ate was not like the others. Something was wrong. It retreated far away from the other worms, his instincts kicking in, telling him he was a menace to the others. The worm was alone for years, excavating the depths of the world and eating minerals and rocks and any other animal smaller than it. Then, after growing big and fat, the worm made its home in tunnels close to the gallery and started to mutate, realigning itself in a different form. After months, it became something different. It was no longer a simple worm, but it was bigger, much more muscular, and now it had tentacles. Sliding its body was no longer necessary. Even better, it had developed the first traces of awareness. It knew that it could get stronger. It just had to eat more, and that's what it did. For years, the creature hunted every single animal in the tunnels. Finally, it perceived that it could pour part of its essence into other beings, animating them, and use it to spread its domain across the depths. They didn't last long, but served well for hunting smaller beings. Nevertheless, the creature was getting more and more unstable. Sometimes random memories of fear, pain, grief could take a hold of it. In its rage, the creature would become partially undone, as if its body started attacking itself. This is crazy, right? By this time, the creature had met the giant diggers that ruled the depths. And whenever one of those giant lizard-like creatures appeared, the creature hid from them as they squashed the creature's minions with a simple swing of their tails. Nevertheless, the creature desired these predators. It felt that if he acquired one of them, it could become complete, stronger, and stable. The beast that started to craft a strategy to kill a digger. Now, this is describing Atof growing up from a worm that ate a really weird mineral, okay? Growing up, getting tentacles, and seeing giant creatures which look like giant uh, uh, diggers, right? They're going to like maybe worm moles or like a kind of a giant worms as well. Um, and he wanted to kill one of these. So I'm going to fast forward to throughout all this through when and Yago's battling with this uh, thing, with this uh, uh, Atof. And then we're going to go more, okay? He saw the creature observing the giant lizards in the depths, analyzing their habits, preparing for an attack. First, it considered going for one of the newborns, but the parents constantly watched them. This, they're talking about the diggers at the moment. And when one of the parents was hunting, the other would be there to protect their offspring. The creature understood that its best shot was against one of the young adults. This species cycle had the habit of leaving their families to find a partner as soon as they were not deemed infants anymore. And the male and female lizards stayed together forever once they found their pair. 
The males of the species were incredibly proud and would never back away from a challenge before their partner, and the creature used this knowledge to drive the young male to his trap. Once a suitable pair was found, the creature challenged the male digger and drove him to a fight where he could use his tentacles to tear down the ceiling over the male lizard. The plan worked, and the attack wounded the male lizard, uh, the male digger or lizard. When the creature underest underestimated the tenacity of the young male, the battle dragged on for hours until the lizard managed to mortally injure the creature. Full of anger and pain, the creature condensed its conscience into a piece of its flesh, and as the winning dragon ate its defeating body, um, the Atoff became a parasite of the digger, and slowly started to fight his consciousness for the control of the body. The digger sensed the attack and left his partner, fearing for her safety, and went deep into the entrails of Jirio, hiding from her to fight off this horrible infection. Ultimately, neither of them won, and the creature gave birth to Atoff, becoming a mess with many consciousness constantly fighting over control. However, the digger's lingering conscience never left itself, or its manifestations ever came close to his partner. They, that then stopped the female digger from trying to find her consort, and even after years, she was still searching and calling out for the partner. So, this is, this is the history of Atoff, how Atoff came to being. It's pretty interesting. I want you guys to go ahead and read this. Let's actually look at the showroom itself. Apologies, it's been six minutes. We're just going through this. We haven't actually looked at the... Um, showroom at the um at the uh kind of uh, update what's happening so showroom uh ue5 the product distribution is locked in the the um the hologram just released an article maybe saying it's an epics game store release kind of thing it's not really a partnership think of it as like uh getting onto the google uh play store or the app app store for apple you know um think about it like that so you'll have a whole bunch of new people seeing the product itself and coming in Onboarding process should be much, much easier. So they want to finish the upcoming distribution preparation. For Scream itself, they're testing the Starbase upgrading, completing the Starbase crafting. The cargo player profile points um, is ready for internal auditing. Okay, that's for the updates for the Scream. What's upcoming for Scream? Nothing else I really looked at that would uh, was different from last week. I think that this time is the determining the score to Scream transition strategy. Because remember, we're going from you know just staking your ships to actually playing the game or playing the uh, web-based game. So they got to think about how they're going to onboard people from there to there. That's what it, that's what I mean. The Star Atlas DAO dark mode, thank God, is in progress at the moment. The light hurts my eyes. Um, upcoming activities, they want to improve the polis locking period controls and the reward chart improvements. Um, not bad. Uh, so nothing really uh, uh, significant doesn't change anything. It's just how you interact with it. That's all. It, the, the item itself is still the same. Uh, for the graphic novel, they want a creation of the first few episodes are still in progress. Progress made on UI mockups for the comic reader. Release and distribution preparation works are still in progress. And they're coming, thinking of the final UI design for Comic Reader. So I assume now that there's going to be an actual like uh, interface for you to read the comic. It won't be just like uh, on Google Docs, hopefully not. It should be integrated into the Star Atlas website itself. And I think it should be on the marketplace. It should be on the marketplace. Here's why I think so. Because on the play.staratlas website, at the ending here, they have a feature which is coming. Beginning work on the graphic novel. What does that mean? You know how they have that feature section at the top where usually there's a new ship that launches there? They're going to have the graphic novel there as well. So this is going to be a collectible item, okay? This will be a collectible item. Mark my words. Mark my words. What about the royalty fees? The back-end calculations are done. The front-end calculations are in progress now. RPC calls are completed and they're waiting for the front-end calculations to be done. So... Uh, we know the royalty fees will be coming very soon, maybe with the 4 to 6 announcement. Let's have a look. Now, next thing I wanted to mention is uh, two more things I wanted to mention, please. Uh, make sure you go and uh, do the uh, feedback form for Star Atlas. Um, they're, they're, they help us improve Star Atlas releases by sharing what games you enjoy playing and what features of those games are most appealing to you. They want to ask the community. You tell them what games you want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this out and you guys can join me as well, okay? This is the video game survey. What video game themes do you enjoy playing? I like racing sometimes, MMOs, shooters not so much, fantasy, yes, and space, yes. Strategy, maybe not so much. A strategy, yes, but like uh, not heavy uh, micromanaging strategy because that just takes way too much time and a lot of people won't get that, okay? Do you play space-themed non-blockchain video games like EVE Online on Solaris? Yes. Next. I lied there. <laughs> Which of the following space-themed non blogger games is your favorite? Uh, Star Citizen, EVE Online, Prosperous Universe, maybe. I think I would say EVE um, because Star Citizen really... I think Star Citizen is more, more what Star Atlas is going to. 
What kind of activities do you enjoy the most in the games? I like earning rewards, exploring the game map, and uh, crafting, um, and engaging in battles or racing, focusing on strategic and economic to these two. So I'm going to go there um, and then take one off. Um, so I'll go, I like exploring the game map. If only I could give me three. Three is what I want. Focus on the strategy. Okay. Yeah, then I'll go here. No, actually, it's going to be these three. What gameplay mechanics are most important to you in the game? I want to say... Pace. Game modes. And corporation. That's what I want. Do you play blockchain games other than Star Atlas? Yes. What kind of activities do you enjoy? Mining, joining community, strategy and economic activities, engaging in battle or racing, exploring the game map. Those two. Which of the following blockchain game is your favorite? Ori, Juniper, Pets, Axie Infinity, Illuvium. I would say Illuvium because they are just the, the best so far. I'm not going to lie. Illuvium is the best so far. Ugh, you guys are going to hate me for this, but the amount of progress they're making, um, the, the, the way they're going about making their progress, um, I think is uh, really good, to be honest. Like, I'm not, I'm not a hater on other blockchain games. You know, you're allowed to like other games. I think Illuvium beats Axie Infinity so far. Axie Infinity has a small market, uh, uh, addressable market that they can go to. Juno Pets is like the whole walk to earn. Aurori is like a B grade of Illuvium, Star Atlas, and Axie Infinity. So Aurori knows. So I would say Illuvium at the moment. What gameplay mechanics are most important to you in this game? I would say freedom of action is pretty good. I would also say not price per se because it's a game. Uh, yes, playable assets. Loyalty is pretty good. I like the pace as well and the skills. If only oh, this is this is there's a lot of stuff here. There's a lot of stuff here. I'm sorry this is uh, going for a bit long. For future Star Atlas gameplay releases, what gameplay mechanics are most important to you? And especially in Star Atlas. Um, ah, in Star Atlas. In Star Atlas, you can only choose three, right? Uh, I would say, I would say, I would say. Game modes is good because you need to have constant different ways to play. Um, freedom, ac freedom, freedom of action is pretty good. And I would also say loyalty. Yeah, that's, that's what I want. Because if you enjoy the game, it's going to be good. Are there any other features, activities, and important to you in the future? Sorry, let's gameplay release. Um, no. Just execute on what... Star Atlas set out to. That's it. Yeah, I know that's not really helpful at all to them, but that's my response to them. Now, I also did have something else I wanted to tell you guys about. Um, where was it? Let me just get it up, sorry. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's it for now. Oh yeah, the NFT. Now, people did get an NFT in their wallet. It is fake. It is a scam. Do not be fooled. So people got in their phantom wallets a Star Atlas first anniversary, $600,000 in prices. This is absolutely fake. Do not even click on it. I'm going to show you right now how to totally get rid of it, how to burn it, okay? So give me one second while I log into my account. Don't look at my account. Let me go ahead. Oh no, you saw my account. Let me go ahead and show you this NFT so you can find out how to burn it yourself, okay? This was released to ev probably everyone in SCORE who has a, um, who has a uh, NFT there, who has a, a, a staked ship. This is that NFT, okay? First Star Atlas anniversary is coming soon. We want to share your gratitude. Event.staratlas.net. Do not click on this website, okay? It is a scam. I'm going to show you. Click on the top right corner. Burn token right there. Click on that. This action will permanently destroy and remove this token from your wallet, okay? I understand this. Do not do this with any other token because you will literally lose it, okay? I'm going to go ahead and burn this token. You burn that token and then it's gone from your wallet because all of these take up Solana uh, account fees. I'm going to get back 0.002 Solana in this. So now it's gone and I don't have to look at it again, okay? Make sure you do that as well to get rid of all your scam. And Star Atlas themselves were saying this is a scam warning, okay? Not from, not from them at all. That's it for now. I'm going to leave it here. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, ciao, guys. I will see you very soon with the next update for Star Atlas. Maybe my 100th episode. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. See you soon.